In this video, we will briefly talk about how to calculate probabilities for binomial random variables, in particular the probability mass function. So here's the setup. We have a binomial random variable which we call x. The parameters of this random variable is that we have n and so number of Bernoulli experiments we conduct is n and the probability of success in an individual Bernoulli experiment is pi. Now our random variable counts the number of successes out of these n experiments. So it can take values of, um, so the sample space here is 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to n, whatever that n is. So that's the sample space of x. So let's say we want to calculate a particular probability, a probability that our random variable capital X takes a particular value x. For instance, we'll use that example in a moment, 5. Okay. Here is the, uh, here is the formula we are using for this calculation. We have this thing here. It's not n divided by x. We call this the combinatorial coefficient. Combinatorial coefficient. And I'll explain in a moment what it represents and how it is calculated. So it's not n over x. So we have this combinatorial coefficient times pi to the power of x times 1 minus pi to the power of n minus x. So let me now write down how we calculate this beast. It's calculated as n factorial divided by x factorial over and still divided by n minus x factorial. Now remember what n factorial means. n factorial means we are calculating a product from 1 times 2 times 3 times all the way to times n. Okay, This is what we call a factorial. And in Excel, if you want to calculate that in Excel, you use the function fact and then whatever number. So we have this times pi to the power of x times 1 minus pi to the power of n minus x. So let's use an example. Let's say we have n equals to 30 and we want to calculate the probability for little x equals to 5. So we want to calculate the probability that x is equal to 5. So then let's just plug in our um, values. Actually we need one more. We need the probability of success. Let's set that to 0.2, could be anything between 0 and 1, but let's set it to 0.2. So we get n factorial, which is 30 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 25 factorial, I don't need this, times 0.2 to the power of 5 times 0.8, 1 minus pi, to the power of 25. So what do we get? You can of course plug in all of these values into your calculator to calculate to calculate this. Uh, what you get here is for the factorial you get 142,506, then 0.2 to the power of 5 is a pretty small number already. That's 0 0.00032. And then times 0 0.8 to the power of 25. That 
is also a fairly small number, 3778. Now, of course, you could just calculate this, but I want to rewrite this just in a slightly different way. I'm just multiplying these two numbers together. So we get zero and then five zeros. And then one, two, zero, nine. So now these two numbers have an interpretation. So we are looking for the probability that out of 30 attempts, we get five successes, okay? N equals 30 and we are thinking of five successes and on each of our 30 attempts, the probability of getting a success is 0.2. Now think about how many different ways are there to get five successes out of 30, to get five heads if we cost a coin 30 times. That's an awful many ways how we can get that. In fact, it's 142,506 ways. Okay, so that number tells us the ways to get five out of 30. So one way would be the first five give a success and the remaining 25 are not a success. That would be five successes out of 30. Another way would be success, no success, 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 and then the remaining 20 no successes. That would also be five successes out of 30. Now, it turns out that each of these individual ways, for instance, what is the probability that the first five Bernoulli experiments are a success and the remaining 25 are not a success. How would we calculate that? Let us think about here. Let's think about head of a success and tail as not a success. So head, head, uh, sorry, no, I shouldn't do head and tails because we, we would think about that as, um, as a success probability 50%. Remember, we are having a success probability of 20%. So I just say success, 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 and then failure, 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 all together 25 times a failure. Okay, five successes, then 25 failures. Well, what would be the probability for that if each of the Bernoulli experiments are independent, as we have to assume to get a binomial random variable? Well, the success probability is 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. That's the probability to get five successive successes. And then what's the probability to then get a failure? It's 0 0.8 to get the next failure times 0 0.8. Well, it's then a lot of these finishing off with an 0 0.8. How many of these? 25. And what is the result of this? The result of this is 0 0.00051, uh, five zeros, one, two, oh, nine. That is exactly the probability we have here. So that is the probability for any, for any way in which we get five out of 30. But how many of these do we have? Well, we have 142,506. So overall, the probability that we get five out of 30 is 0.17. 2279, almost or a bit more than 17%. So while any particular way to get a 5 is extremely unlikely with this probability, as there are 142,506 possible ways to get that, altogether that 
delivers a quite substantial probability of more than 17%. So this is how we use this formula to get probabilities for binomial random variables.